Hey guys, Jordan here with the Jumok channel and welcome to a new episode of Elite Dangerous. And today we'll be doing a little guide on bounty hunting, combat, some other things like that. Uh, really whatever I feel like covering in this episode. Uh, for now, I'm still in my Type 6 from the last episode. It's actually been quite a while since I've recorded. So I'm still in that Type 6 uh, for trading. But in just a minute, I will find a place where we can purchase a a new a new ship for combat and find a nice place with some good resource extraction sites which are honestly the best for bounty hunting and I will check into that stuff and I'll be right back all right guys welcome back um, I am here I've landed in let's see what this is I guess butts port in uh, Karenner AB1 system and I'm kind of liking this because first off, it's a high-tech port, which means it has lots of uh, lots of ships, lots of uh, stuff in the outfitting to put on. Um, also, it seems to have a uh, several extraction sites, including a has hazardous and a high resource extraction site. So, thinking about sticking around here for a while. I mean, this is a perfect place for that, uh, for bounty hunting and whatnot. So I think I'm going to pick up this Diamondback Scout. Uh, I think that's the best way to go here. And now Diamondback Scout. I've, I've played around with Diamondback Scout uh, quite a bit uh, with bounty hunting. Um, just, wow, this is really slow today. Let's see how much money we have. 6.6 .6 million credits to play around with. Okay, not too bad. Uh, give me, Give me some stuff there. All right, let's go into the outfitting and take a look, see what we can do. Oh, wow, everything changed. I haven't played this since the new update, so I heard that they were changing it, but I didn't know what they were changing it to. So this is pretty interesting. Let's go into, I guess the internal would be, oh, yeah, and they've changed everything to look very different. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Let's see what they have here. Do they have the military? Yeah, okay. I like the military. The military is actually my favorite because it's, it does raise the weight uh, quite a bit. Uh, let's see. It's uh, yeah, 26 ton compared to... Uh, I don't even know how much. I guess this weighs nothing because it's the standard, uh, standard hull. Yeah, so this will add 26 ton to the ship, but it also adds 250% hull boost, which is uh, quite a bit. Um, it does, oh, this has a less kinetic resistance. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. I don't really like picking these because you lose kinetic resistance for that or you lose thermal resistance, which is, I, you know, I don't know which one's better, really, and I don't want to play around with that, so I just go with the military grade there. Okay, and... Let's see. Definitely need a better power plant. Uh, probably four size for sure. Probably need four B or A. I wonder if a C. I wonder if I can get away with a C. I don't know. You know what I might do is um just add some parts for now and see see what I need to see what power plant I need to run everything. So I definitely want the 4A thrusters. Let's see if I could find them. 1.6 mil, that's fine. Frame shift drive, I might just go with a C. Maybe even a D for the weight. Probably 4D. Yeah, I'll go with a 4D for the weight. I'm not gonna be using the frame shift drive very much, and if I do frame shift out of here, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just do the, um, I'll just come back and buy a new one. So let's see, life support is a size 2. And I'll probably just go with the 2D for that. No problem. Distributor, I definitely want the 3A distributor. Gotta be able to move that power around real quick. Uh, and it also helps your, uh, recharge times and, uh, capacities and whatnot for all your your weapons and engines and systems so for, you know for recharging your your shields the systems and 
engines for the boost and, and speed and whatnot, so it uh, definitely helps everything there. Life support's just your oxygen. If your mask gets blown out, you have 7 minutes, 30 seconds to get back and get it fixed. Uh, let's see. Sensors. I'm probably just going to go with a D as well. Or no, I, I do like upgraded sensors because you can see a lot further. It does draw a lot more power, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, I'm going to get the A sensors there. And the fuel tank is, I think, just the same. Yeah, nothing. You can get a smaller fuel tank, but that would be pretty pointless. And those are the core internals. I'm done except the power plant there. Let me just go to optional internal. I guess they split them up now. That's cool. So this is all the optional stuff. Like, I don't need a planetary approach suite, so let's just sell that. I don't need a basic discovery scanner, so let's just sell that. I definitely need... Definitely need a shield generator, and it looks like three is the highest I'm going to be able to get. So let me go in here. I definitely want better than 3E. I like how they, I really like how they did this, because you used to have to scroll through a huge list over here of everything just to find, and shield generators were always at the bottom, which was pointless in my opinion, because, you know, shield generators are what you're going to be using a lot. Let's see, I mean, 3A. But I do want to know. Oh, see, they don't have the other stuff, like uh, other shield cell banks and stuff. Yeah, I'll probably get some of those. Okay, shield generator. Probably definitely want to go with a 3A there. I don't even know where my money is. Oh, there it is, 4.3 mil. Okay. I got money. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest of this stuff until I figure out what hard points I want. So I get two smalls, two mediums. And I guess the utilities are here, right? Yeah, okay. Four utilities. And then hard points are for the weapons. So... I don't know if it still works how it used to, but it used to be the small ones you usually wanted to take down shields with, and those were energy weapons. Thermal weapons, I mean. So, I'm just trying to think which ones I would rather have. Beam lasers heat up really fast. Probably want burst lasers. I think I'm going to go with either burst lasers or the pulse lasers. I don't know how they work anymore, but let's just try this one. One F or one G. Oh, the gimbal? Okay. Yeah, I usually use the gimbal with the burst or pulse lasers. Um, if I have the beam lasers, I'll usually go with the fixed because it uses a little bit less power. And with the beam lasers, you can kind of just point the front of your ship at and hold the button, and, and it'll take the, sh the shields down pretty quick. Actually, I might just go for the beam lasers. Oh, they're quite expensive, aren't they? And they only have the fixed. Wow, they, they've gone up in price quite a bit. If I could just go with the pulse lasers. Automatic signature now. I don't need automatic. Because I think you lose a little bit. Power draw goes down. Damage goes down. Distributor draw goes down. Now nah, let's just go with the gimbaled. Gimbaled pulse lasers. Let's see how those do. And matching one on the other side. And then for the medium hard points, I think we're just going to go with the pretty standard multi cannons. That's a, almost like a machine gun um, attached to your ship there. I do like the cannons too, but they're a little bit more difficult to hit with. And since this is kind of a beginner's guide, I think we'll go with the multi-cannons for now. Do you want to see what these are? Okay, so yeah, size 2, gimbal. Size 2, gimbal. Yep. Okay, now we get to watch this animation. 
Alrighty. Let's see. And another size to gimbal. Okay, and now for the utilities. For bounty hunting, definitely want kill wart scanner. Just it increases the amount of money that you get, especially outside of the system, which means you have to go to other systems to get them. Um, but that's fine with me. So let me figure out which kill warrant scanner I want. Probably not the A. Probably go with a three thousand. Yeah, I think a three thousand. They all they all take the same. It's just how far they scan. So I could scan three thousand meters with that. That would be fine. That would be perfect, actually. Definitely want a chaff launcher. And that is used to, if somebody has a gimbal or a turret lock on you, it, this uh, scatters uh, chaff and messes up the scanners, and they can't hit you, or at least for a minute there. For this, for the, for the Diamondback Scout, probably want some shield boosters, because I know the shields are not very good. Neither are the, neither is the hull. So you definitely want some kind of uh, some kind of shield boosting going on here, and these aren't the kinds. I think these are the kinds just just increase the active shield. Yes, they do. And you definitely want A on these because they do boost them by twenty percent. Not a fantastic amount, but. Let me buy just two shield boosters just to get those shields up. Because I don't really need anything else, and I have the money. So I might as well put it in to the ship. Now we do need to go back to that power plant and see what we need here. If I get the A, it'll actually cover everything that I have on here right now. So that's fine. Okay, so we'll just get the 4A power plant. I can afford it. Insurance cost currently is 210,000 credits, as you can see at the bottom there. Which is nice that they put it on this screen. They used to put it off to the side. You'd have to kind of check it when you left just to make sure that you can pay for your ship again. This is, you'd never want your balance to go underneath your insurance cost. Otherwise, you start over. Which is no good. We may have to, you know what, if I start putting these things on here, we may have to make it so that it shuts the frameshift drive off and stuff whenever we deploy. That's fine. Frameshift drive doesn't work when you're in deployed mode anyway, so it's not a huge deal if the bottom line is above. Now, if the top line's above, that means your ship's just gonna shut down unless you shut off stuff that you purchased anyway, and that's just terrible. So, let's go into the internal compartments, and I don't think we need any cargo or anything. No docking computers, that's pretty pointless on this kind of ship. It's a maneuverable ship. Very, very pretty fast, very maneuverable ship. So, oh yeah, hull, enforcement, hull reinforcements are good with this ship too. Because it kind of needs them. Although right now I want a shield cell bank. And I think I want... 3B is the highest one it has. There's four. With a pretty fast shield and spin up timer five seconds on everything. It takes five seconds to discharge. Yeah, the shield cell bank basically when your shield is low, you hit a button. Um, for me, it's actually one of the set buttons on my X52 Pro. Um, so I just hit a button on there and it, it two seconds it'll give you, uh, or no, it's five seconds to spin up and then it gives you a boost of shields. Now you gotta hit that button before the shields go out, otherwise you you just lose your shields and the shield cell bank. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's buy a shield cell bank. We still have quite a bit of money, so let's just go to the two hall reinforcements. Hall reinforcements, I've noticed you pretty much want the D package because the E package, okay, so we're gonna go three E, it is 230 and it weighs 16 tons. This one's 260 and it weighs 8 tons, so it weighs half as much and gives you quite a bit more. And that weight is a big thing, especially in this ship, because this ship you really want to be maneuverable, and you lose a lot of maneuverability and speed when you got that weight going. So we definitely want some hull reinforcements to make sure that they can't hit us. Well, they can hit us, but if they do, 
it doesn't kill us quickly. Okay, we'll get a 2D on this one because I think this is just a 2... Yeah, it's a size 2 slot. That's fine. Okay, so there we go. Quite a bit more hull there. We got probably good hull strength. Yeah, you see how the bottom's over there? We're going to have to take a look at that. We will in just a sec here. I think the ship's good. I don't have any paint jobs or anything. I don't really spend the money on that. Fire group reminders, that's fine. Here, my shield's going up. Shields online. Nice. Okay, so this... Let's see, we can shut off the cargo hatch. Now you see it's 100%, 106 usage when, it, when we're over. Okay, so we'll shut the cargo hatch off. That'll bring us down to 103. That's fine. Now, in order to make it so that things shut off... See, we, you have these priority numbers here. One means it's priority one. It won't shut off at all. So what we're going to do is put... Whoopsies. Sorry, my head is a little... <laughs> my neck's causing me a little bit of problems today. So my head is causing some issues. Okay, so we want to put frameshift drive in priority two. That only uses 1% of power. Wow. They dropped the power usage of that. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, essentially, what I did while you guys were gone, um, I just was looking through, figuring out what I needed, and I really just needed to sell one of the shield boosters. That brought me down to a 95% usage, which is really, really good. So rid of the kill warrant, kill warrant scanner, you kind of want... Now, this is usually how I set it up. And thanks to, I think it was Vindicator Jones who set these up pretty similar. So I think if it was him, thank you to him uh, for, for his guides and whatnot. Um, so like I said, the chaff launcher and the shield cell banks that are down the bottom, I don't need to set up fire groups for those because I already I already set them. So really what it is, is when I'm in fire group 1, I want to be able to have the pulse lasers, lasers ready, but run my kill warrant scanner with my second button, which is my pinky button. And then on here, I want this to be my weapons group. So pulse lasers on the, on the trigger, and multi-cannons on the pinky. So give me a moment, guys, while I head o while I get out of here and head over to the resource extraction site. I think I'm going to go to the high one for now. Uh, decent money there, but there's still some uh, some federal uh, security, just in case you need some assistance. And I'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. So here we are now, just dropping into the resource extraction site. You can already see because of the enhanced scanners, you've already got some things popping up. So let's just... Okay, this is an Asp Explorer. Probably... Yeah, probably clean. Looks like he's got somebody with him. Okay, security. That's fine. We'll scan the security so we know where they are. Okay, and I see some more coming this way. And the data is here. Okay. Interesting. Ah, Cobra. Okay. Cobras almost always are pirates. They're also very easy to take down. They usually aren't worth a lot. So let's just go ahead and... Go over to this guy. You know what, I'll flip open. I'll deploy right now. We're definitely in range for warrant scanning, so we'll, we'll warrant scan him. Because he's not going to be worth a lot. So we want to warrant scan him. Okay, so we got him. So let's take a look over here, and he'll be in your contacts. He will be, what was that, Wicker? Yeah. Serious security. Okay, so he's wanted for 14,000 is his total bounty. Not horrible, and we can take him down pretty easily, so let's just do that. Let's figure out the button to switch. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it's been a while since I played this, like I said, so it's going to take me a minute to get used to it. Okay, guys, so here we go. Swooping in and shooting. Okay, so you can see in the throttle down there, if you can watch my throttle, um, you can see that... I am. Oh, this guy's gonna die pretty quickly, actually. You can see I'm kind of keeping it in the blue. That allows you to be a little bit more maneuverable. You can also use your thrusters a lot. I use my thrusters a lot during battle. And I see, now he's pointing at me. Oh, he's about to die. He's done. Alright, so we got 15 grand there. Real easy. He lost quite a bit, I think, did he? Is that from him? I don't think that was from him. 
shield emitters and stuff. It might have been from him. I don't know. Okay, he's an eagle. This guy's super easy. We'll take him down real quick. He's starting to get away a little bit. Speed up a bit here. Don't want to go too fast. Don't want to fly past him. All right, let's see. Francisco. Francisco. There he is. 22,000. Better than our last one. All right, he's deadly, which means he's actually a pretty decent fighter, but he's also in a pretty terrible ship. So he's attacking someone now. He's got somebody's attention. Okay, he's hitting us pretty good. All right, so right now I'm just pushing my down thrusters to try to keep out of his range, which is not working out too well. Oh, I forgot to switch over to systems a little bit. My fault. <laughs> Normally I do that, I must have not do that against that Cobra. He just wasn't very good. Alright, I have to get him away from Alright, yeah, hit that boost, flip around. Should be able to get him in sights now. Yep, there he is. He's much faster than me, much more maneuverable. Yeah, I'm gonna have to blow past him again. Put a little Target bit of my shields to, uh, oh, he's on. Alright guys, welcome back. So as you can see in front of me, there's an Asp Explorer, and he's actually being attacked right now by a bunch of the security services. So this is really good for us, and also if you guys go to like a high res, uh, a high resource extraction site, high risk one, um, you'll see this kind of thing happen. And it's actually really good for you whenever you do scan this. Detected. So we're going to go ahead and just move in here on him. we got a scan. Okay, one of the pirates is scanning us. No big deal. All right, so we're going to slow down. Target shields offline. Try to get this guy scanned and attacked before he dies. So we'll scan him up real quick. Did I get him? Yeah, I got him. Okay, scan complete. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move in on him. Okay, so we got him red. Hit him a bunch of times. Okay, so we are definitely more maneuverable than an Asp Explorer, so I'm not too worried about this fight. Especially because we do have the assistance. Okay, we got hit a few times. Oh, 48. We still got 48,000 out of that, though. Not bad. Okay, they're shooting somebody else now. Oh, yeah, it looks like that guy. Yep, that's him. So that's the courier that scanned us earlier, so we are going to definitely go ahead and get him. Couriers are usually worth a decent amount of money. And especially because he's being attacked by all these, uh, all these people now. He's a good choice for us. So let's scan him. And hit him. Got him, 30,000. Not horrible. Oh yeah, and be careful whenever you're shooting near these federal security service guys, or any of the security service guys. Because if you hit them by accident, they will shoot you back. I guess they don't like being shot too much. Oh, there's an anaconda that's a federal security service. So the security here is actually pretty big. Because they're in a huge wing. Okay. I think there's two security wings here. Yeah, there is. There's two security wings here, which is... Rather strange for Scan getting scanned right now. Alright, so let's just kind of go through. You can do what I'm doing here and just kind of flip through, or you can go over here and go through. And you can see, like, okay, this guy, Sidewinder, scan required. So let's find him. Okay, so we lock on him. You say, okay, there he is. Turn around. I don't believe the Sidewinder is a threat, but let's go ahead and just scan him anyway. Now he is wanted. Oh, he's in a wing. 
Okay, that is something else to worry about, or watch out for. If they're in a way. Okay, so you see these three ships next to him. Okay, so we need to check out what these wings are. Okay, there's an adder. And there's another sidewinder. Okay, so it's two sidewinders and an adder. Really small wing. They could be annoying. Okay, they're getting attacked a lot, so we're going to go ahead and join in this fight. And we're not even going to bother scanning them, we're just going to take them down. Honestly, this is going to be a very easy fight. Especially because we have uh, a four-wing security service backing us. It's okay, I mean, we'll make a little bit of money. As you can see, these guns just rip through him. Okay, he's on it. Target destroyed. There's another Diamondback Scout. Let's see what he's doing. Okay, he's wanted. Let's go ahead and scan him quick. Let's see if he's worth anything. Because he might be a little bit more difficult because he's the same as ours. 39,000, though. I'll take him. So what we gotta do now is kinda just readjust these. We're gonna need more engines and weapons. He's gonna have a weaker haul like we do. So we're definitely going to go ahead and take a look at him right now. Let's get closer. And you know, another thing that you can do... Okay, he's scanning me. And that's fine. I want to go ahead and target his power plant. As you can see, I have a little scroll wheel that does that, but you can select it. I can't remember the button right now on the keyboard. But you can select that, the power plant, and... The smaller ships, it's not a huge deal, but the big, the big ships like an Anaconda, it is a big deal. Um, if you can take out their power plant, they're kind of dead in the water. There's a 50% chance, I believe it is, that they explode. Okay, so see, he's using chaff now. He's got a little bit more engines than me, so let's turn up the engines. Let's just keep our shields off for now shield recharging. Okay, so he's definitely the same speed as us. I um, need to do something a little bit different. Let me turn the uh, thrusters on, the downward thrusters. Get him. Okay, he's being attacked by the group of four. That's fine. We won't deny the help. kind of want to keep it as best you can. Okay, so you can get the third time very easily. You kind of want to keep it the best you can as to him in your crosshairs. So if you can kind of, you know, loop around him, like slow your ship down a little bit and kind of do this. Loop around him. And you'll find the sweet spot eventually. It, it does take time. Oh, good. There's a... Okay, let's speed away from here. And if you follow these guys around long enough, they'll lead you to, uh, to people that you can shoot. But if they scan you and you're illegal, then they will shoot you as well. So, you obviously don't want to shoot anybody that's not wanted, because then, because then you'll get shot by the security. Just flying around, trying to find some people to shoot. Here's a python. Pythons are pretty scary. Oh, and he's in a big, big wing, too. We might not be going against him unless that anaconda wing starts helping. Oh, look, he's actually in a fight right now, so that's nice. Scan him and see what he's carrying. Okay, Conan Brown. 156,000. Okay, yeah, he'll definitely be worth it. So if he's getting fought... 
the other security service guys are here. Okay, so we're gonna do it now. Let's start shooting. We're gonna have to keep an eye out for that other eagle. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So we wanna keep kinda close to him. Okay, we're getting way too risky now. Too brave, too brave. Yeah, when they're pointed at you, it's never a good time. If they point their guns at you, you're done for. Just if they get some good hits on you. Alright, so we're going to aim for the... Come on. Power plant, there we are. Right, is he pointing at us? He is pointing at us. So we got 156,000 from him. Not bad at all. I'll take it. Alright, so we got a decent amount in bounty, I think. I'm gonna go through to the transactions to see that. So we got probably about 300,000 here. Yeah, about, probably about 300,000 here. Not too bad. Um, Probably want a bit more than that, though. That's not a lot. I mean, if you're starting out and you have 300,000 in the bank, you should go get it. Because what happens is if you die, you lose all your bounties, plus you have to pay for a new ship. So if you're just starting out, you definitely want to get... Uh, definitely want to get that taken care of as soon as possible. Okay, so we're getting... We're getting as you can see, I was kind of sitting in the same spot, which was not a great idea, because all you had to do was turn, line up on me, and fire. I'm not too worried, because his weapons are not that good. He's an Asp Explorer, which is not a good ship. Okay, he's gone. Alright guys, so we got a decent haul. Um, I think it's time to head back to the thing now, but now leaving these rings is kind of a little difficult sometimes. So I wanted to kind of just give you guys a little pointers on how to get out. Now you see I'm pointing pointing at the planet right now. Obviously you don't want to aim at the planet when you've got a frameshift drive. But you can see the ring line is is this area here. You can see the really thick dust and all that. Now you want to point uh, kind of perpendicular. Now this is really easy with track IR because I can kind of just look to my side here and see. Oh, okay, you're uh, you know lined up there, lined up there. Now... You, know, you kind of want to go as perpendicular as possible because what happens is if you hit the rocks again when you're going into frameshift drive, uh, it, it stops you. It pulls you right back out, yanks you back out, and you don't go very far. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in full engines and kind of point as straight out of the cloud as we can and hit that frameshift drive a few times. And you'll see the mass lock go off. In a minute here. It won't be mass locked soon. See, we're out of mass lock now. I heard the sound. Um, so we're good now, um, but I would give it another another few just because these the rings are real finicky. They like yanking you out of of uh, frame shift drive if you're just slightly too close. So definitely want to do this and then hit your frame shift drive. Also, the further away you are, I think the faster it charges. Four, three, I can't confirm two, that, but it just seems one, that way to me. Engage. So you'll see us enter frame shift drive go much faster. Okay, now that we're done here, I probably should have set where we were going beforehand, but that's okay. I'll just look over here and do it now. We're going to butt support again. This is a decent way to make money, just kind of go back and forth between a planet and you want a decent outlying, uh, like a port. You want a pretty decent one nearby to a re to several resource extraction sites, just in case if one's dead, you can kind of fly out, jump to another one. Um, so as you can see, this butts port is really close, so you kind of just want to fly back. And this is when you want to be very careful, because if you if you die now, you lose everything. So you kind of want to be careful. 
Alright guys, welcome back. Here we are just pulling right into port here. And as soon as we land, get those. Get that money. Okay, there we are. Landed. Now we'll go ahead and just hit the starport services here. And here we go. We have 1.5 mil. We'll go ahead and go into the contacts and the local security office. And okay, we have 426,000 credits, which uh, isn't bad at all. It's actually a pretty decent draw. Uh, usually I don't go back until I have maybe at least one mil. Usually probably closer to three, three mil. I usually stay out for quite a long time, but uh, for right now, just for this video's sake, I just wanted to shorten it up a little bit, but you could stay out there really as long as you would like. Um, if you do have weapons such as the multi-cannons like mine, you do just want to keep an eye on your ammunition. Just make sure you have enough ammunition to continue, you know, taking down the enemies. Okay, guys, basically that's your uh, that's your bounty hunting guide there. Um, hope, hope it helped you out there. Uh, there might be a little bit more footage after this. I don't know if I'm going to put it during the video or, or now. I not too sure but I'm probably gonna get a little bit more footage about uh, uh flying around um, shooting just randomly you know just kind of just kind of give you guys a, a feel a look for for what you're what you're looking for whenever you're flying around here at, on these research extraction sites really uh, you don't want to go you kind of got to judge your ship uh, uh, you know I'm not gonna go against an, 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 an anaconda by myself right now it just my ship I don't think could really do it but uh if you were in a fully outfitted vulture uh, you probably could do, probably could take down an anaconda pretty easily. Um, just get those concentrated weapons on the power plant, take out the power plant, and then you just take out the ship. I mean, even if it doesn't blow up right away, not a problem. Just start shooting him. I mean, he's dead in the water. So, uh, anyway, hope that guide helped you guys out. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, and subscribe to see more. Hopefully I'll be getting plenty more Elite Dangerous out there for you guys. The last video I put out was really popular, so depending on the popularity of this video, uh, we'll definitely see where this series goes from here. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and as always, see ya!